Thank you. It's uh, my pleasure to be able to represent a global team of investigators who conducted uh, uh, this clinical trial, which we call Quasar. In the United States, uh, each year, more than 20,000 people are diagnosed with this condition called acute myeloid leuke leukaemia, which is a clonal disorder uh, causing paralysis of the bone marrow uh, functional hematopoiesis, and uh, the current five-year survival rates remain uh, less than 30%. The standard treatment for acute myeloid leukemia uh, is intensive chemotherapy, uh, combining uh, seven days of ARAC and three days of an anthracycline. And although this treatment has been uh, in existence uh, since 1973, uh, and a lot of people get into remission with this, unfortunately the vast majority of patients still relapse, particularly those in uh, older age groups. Currently, uh, the only uh, standard post-remission therapy is hematopoietic stem cell transplant, uh, which clearly is not suitable for particularly older patients with acute myeloid leukaemia. Uh, the goals of maintenance therapy are, are obvious, uh, to try and deliver some form of therapy which is non-toxic, uh, doesn't affect people's quality of life, uh, with the goal of trying to reduce relapse and potentially prolong overall survival. However, Maintenance studies have been um, undertaken uh, by clinical trialists for the last 30 years, and to date, uh, no particular therapy has been shown to uh, improve uh, overall survival. CC486 is an oral hypomethylating agent uh, with a distinct pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic profile compared to injectable azacitidine. And it's been previously shown to be uh, tolerable and effective in hematologic malignancies, even in people who have failed uh, injectable hypomethylating agent uh, therapy. The hypothesis was that giving an, an easily delivered oral medication uh, with extended drug exposure uh, might have some potential uh, for improving clinical activity, and that delivering such a, a therapy to patients, patients in remission after intensive chemotherapy could be a worthwhile exercise. This led to the development of uh, the Quasar study, which was uh, an international effort uh, to conduct a placebo-controlled, double-blind, randomised phase three study that uh, was conducted in 148 sites in 23 countries worldwide. In terms of the eligibility for this study, patients needed to, have, um, to be aged 55 years or over and to have de novo or secondary AML, uh, and to be in first remission, which means having a blast count in the bone marrow of less than 5%, after intensive chemotherapy with or without consolidation therapy. Patients needed to be relatively healthy in terms of performance score, um, not have favourable risk carrier type, and not to be eligible for a hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Patients also needed to have adequate bone marrow recovery after prior chemotherapy. Patients were randomised on a one-to-one -one ratio within four months of achieving their first remission to either CC486 at a, or placebo at a dose of 300 milligrams per day for the first 14 days of each 28-day cycle. Patients then had bone marrow assessments to uh, look for recurrence of disease every three months whilst on study. If patients remained in remission, they could continue therapy uh, until death or discontinuation of study procedures. If the bone marrow showed that there was an early relapse uh, measured by a bone marrow blast count of between 5 and 15%, uh, physicians were allowed to increase the duration of exposure of the therapy from 14 to 21 days. If patients, however, had uh, an increase in their bone marrow blasts to above 15%, then patients had to stop treatment and went into survival follow-up. The primary endpoint of the study was overall survival, with secondary endpoints being relapse-free survival um, and also safety and measures of health-related quality of life. In terms of the baseline characteristics of the patient population, uh, there were no major differences uh, between uh, the two uh, populations allocated to either CC486 or placebo. You can see here the median age is 68. Uh, most of the people had a good performance score, and 15% uh, of patients in the CC486 arm had poor risk cytogenetics, and 21% of patients had a complete remission with incomplete hematologic recovery, which means that their blood counts uh, weren't fully recovered after chemotherapy. 
In terms of uh, what types of consolidation therapy patients received, at least 78% of patients received at least one cycle of consolidation therapy after being in remission before coming onto this maintenance trial. Most interestingly, I think, uh, was that 43% uh, of patients in the CC486 arm had measure measurable residual disease um, after chemotherapy, which we assume is potentially an important source of a relapse. And 50% of patients uh, had measurable residual disease in the placebo arm. So with a median follow-up of 41.2 months, the primary endpoint for this study in an elderly AML population in first remission was achieved. There was a 9.9 month improvement in overall survival from 14.8 to 24.7 months. The stratified hazard ratio was 0.69 and this was highly statistically significant. There was also a concordant improvement uh, in relapse free survival from five months to 10 months uh, again, with a highly significant hazard ratio. The one-year relapse rate was 53% in the CC486 arm and 71% in those receiving placebo. In terms of safety, uh, one measure of safety is the number of cycles which patients were able to tolerate. And as you can see here, patients in the CC486 arm received a median of 12 cycles of therapy compared to six in the placebo arm. And you can see that some patients received up to 80 cycles of, uh, of treatment. The safety profile of CC486 was very similar to what we experienced with injectable azacitidine. Although the gastrointestinal events seem rather high here, this was because this was a placebo-controlled study, and so we didn't know what treatment the patient was receiving initially. And so when people receive um, azacitidine-like therapy, they do get gastrointestinal side effects. However, in subsequent cycles, patients were put onto prophylactic therapy, and so these adverse events were markedly reduced uh, beyond cycle two. Discontinuation uh, of the therapy due to adverse events was very infrequent, and there were no treatment-related deaths. So in conclusion, CC486 is the first maintenance therapy to provide a statistically significant and clinically meaningful improvement in both overall and relapse-free survival across a broad range of patient uh, subgroups with AML uh, who were in remission after intensive chemotherapy with or without consolidation therapy. Median overall survival was improved by almost 10 months and median relapse-free survival improved by five months with this treatment and benefits were observed across key prognostic AML subgroups. Tolerability was, uh, was good with no uh, unexpected adverse events, and health-related quality of life in patients was preserved. So based on the positive results of this landmark uh, clinical trial, we hope that maintenance therapy with CC486 might represent a potential new therapeutic standard for patients aged 55 years and over with AML in first remission. Thank you.